Hello again, I am Blunty, and ever since I built Devil's Crevice, my shiny new gaming PC rig, I have been kind of itching to do another build. Devil's Crevice was the first from scratch PC build I've done in a pile of years, and I kind of forgot how much fun the whole process is, from deciding what you need versus what you want, then starting to research components, pick parts, hunt for the best prices, the build process itself, and the lovely feeling of accomplishment when you're all done and it's running lovely. So, right now, I'm working on the next build project. It's going to be a mini ITX based build as one of the main reasons I'm building it at all is because after a recent pair of videos I made where I was seeing how closely I could clone two different bespoke Steam Machine console style PCs, I was left with the desire to actually build something like that in the real world so I could play with Steam also on a more representative set of hardware than my main rig is, as Devil's Crevice is way more powerful than most of the off the shelf Steam Machines, obviously. And so the brief for this build starts taking shape. For a start, it has to be mini ITX based, so I can slam it into a nice small case, more friendly to the under TV environment a steam machine is aimed at, and in general I aimed to keep things floating as close as possible to 500 Australian dollary dues, though I wasn't locking myself into that hard, because I'd rather go slightly over budget than compromise the system for the sake of being able to call it an almost cliche $500 killer console bill blah, because that's a little bit tedious and well overdone. During the planning stages of this build, I went through no less than nine different wishlist build configurations on Newegg, but eventually I boiled it down to two different variations, the price difference between them a not insignificant 90 Australian dollars. So I'm going to take you through both options and my reasonings between them. Now, because the plan is to build to the low to moderate end of performance, but by no means make a weak machine, this is supposed to be a practical gaming machine after all, not some silly thought experiment video about how cheap what is technically a gaming PC could be built, I don't want to compromise this thing out of being able to run big new stuff like Fallout 4 or Just Cause 3. So that means going for either a Haswell Refresh or Skylake Core i3 processor. Yes, I know AMD CPUs are cheaper, but dollar to performance specific to gaming performance, Intel wins this fistfight. And the AMD stuff runs way hotter and way more power hungry, which in an ITX build in particular could be a severe issue. Small builds can have airflow issues. And yes, there is that fantastically good value Pentium anniversary CPU that overclocks like a monster, but here's the thing, it is dual core and has no hyper threading and we're just starting to see AAA game titles come out that basically refuse to run on basic dual core CPUs, so that marks that one out. Both i3 CPUs I have here also have dual cores, yes, but they also have hyper threading, so they can act like they've got four, and that's good enough for games. On the Haswell refresh side, I've got the Core i3-4170, a solid choice for a gaming rig and good value. It's also the full power desktop equivalent of the 4170T series variant that appears in several of the off-the-shelf Steam machines like the low-end Alienware model from my clone video. But the Haswell refresh CPUs are now officially surpassed by the new architecture of the Skylake line. So in the second build, I've gone for the base model i3-6100. And on paper, these two i3 chips are very, very, very similar, as a matter of fact. The Skylake chip does, of course, have the smaller 14 nanometer manufacturing process, making it a bit more power efficient, and theoretically at least, a bit cooler running, and it is a little bit more powerful. And at least in artificial benchmarks, it performs just a little bit better in every every respect. But in the real world, in a lower end gaming rig, it could be enough to squeeze out a few extra frames per second because the CPU is the likeliest bottleneck in these builds. But the real reason to choose a Skylake CPU is for the sake of the upgrade path. It is simply going to be easier to move up to an i5 or i7 down the road if you decide you need some more grunt. And for me, the point here is I'm leaving myself open to the opportunity to make video content testing and comparing the upgrade path, which is a secondary aim of this build. I'd like it to be a platform to make an ongoing number of videos about various upgrades and tweaks you can make to a basic gaming rig. With that in mind, the motherboard I've chosen for the Skylake build is a Gigabyte G1 gaming board. And here is where you could potentially save some money on your budget by going for a more basic motherboard. But because I wanted a big wide potential upgrade path for this build, I went for a more advanced build 
running on the Z series chipset, which will allow me to overclock the RAM and CPU if and when I pop in an unlocked i5 or i7 CPU in there. Of course, the i3 I'm starting with cannot be overclocked, so this is a forward-looking consideration only. If you're not worried about overclocking in the future, you can save some cash and go for a H series board, which will still let you pop in i5 and i7 CPUs as upgrades, just not overclock them. Other attractive things about the G1 board are the USB 3.1 and Type-C connection, another forward-looking choice for future reviews of accessories that may require the blazing fast new USB standard, as Devil's Crevice even lacks this being a Haswell refresh build itself. The G1 also has built-in AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.2, and a 4X M.2 slot on the back, leaving the door open for ultra-compact build options. And there's more to love about this board too, but those were the main selling points in respect to this build. On the other build, I found out that many ITX boards for the LGA 1150 socket that the Haswell chip needs are getting rapidly harder to find, but in the end, I settled on a budget-minded H97 based board from ASRock. It too has built-in AC Wi-Fi, but only Bluetooth 4.0. Aside from that, it's a pretty bog-standard, but well-rated little motherboard. And of course, running on the H97 chipset, there's no overclocking. But frankly, if you're not pulling the trigger on a Skylake build from here on in, it's unlikely you're looking to upgrade and even overclock the CPU in the useful lifespan of the rig. For the RAM, on the Haswell build, I've gone with my favoured brand, Kingston's HyperX Fury, just a single stick of 4GB DDR3-1600. 4GB is just fine for gaming at this level, and of course there's a spare slot for a cheap upgrade if you need more. There is an advantage to go for dual channel right off the bat of course, but in gaming it doesn't make a huge difference to real world performance, so a single 4GB stick makes more sense than two 2GB sticks at this point. But if you are trying to squeeze out every last drop of performance, go dual channel, it'll only cost you a few more dollars. On the Skylake build, like with the CPU, I wanted to start out at the low end, so a dirt cheap stick of G-Skill 4GB DDR4 2133 made the list, leaving the upgrade path open for faster overclockable RAM and dual channel options. Now most of the time even slower RAM won't make a difference in a gaming PC, but when the CPU is the bottleneck, as it could be under certain game conditions in this rig, faster RAM can pull back a few more frames per second for you. So I've built with the intent of testing that later on. Start with the slow stuff, try the faster stuff later, see if it makes a difference, make a video about it, have some fun. The rest of the components for both builds are pretty much identical actually. An 80 plus certified power supply of at least 400 watts, a WD Blue 7200 RPM 1TB hard drive, and a case. For the sake of these lists, it was a cute little super tiny DIY PC HDPC cube, which looks like a complete pain in the ass to build in if I'm honest with you, but it is good value and very compact, and I really like the design. You may have noticed the lack of a graphics card in my shopping lists here. No, I'm not an idiot. No, it's not an oversight. No, I didn't forget. That's because these lists were built for my needs, and my needs don't include buying a fresh new GPU for this build as I already have a Gigabyte OC Edition GTX 950 in hand from when I reviewed it three months ago. And it is the card I'd certainly recommend for this kind of budget-minding gaming build anyway. So, already having this card in hand and not having to buy a GPU separately was always calculated and accounted for in the budget and parts selection, which is why I'm not calling these builds a $500 build or a $600 build, which is about what these parts lists cost respectively. So if you're coming in from scratch, it'll add another 200-ish Aussie dollars to the cost if you too go for a GTX 950. Now, is this the cheapest possible build list? Nope. All of these prices, just for the sake of convenience and commonality and consistency, are from Newegg.com. Several components, like the case, the CPU, the hard drive even, are actually cheaper to buy locally here in Australia from somewhere like PCCaseGear.com, especially when you account for shipping. So really the prices here are only a useful comparative between the two system builds. I only use Newegg because their range is large, their prices are competitive, they have good sales fairly regularly, and their multiple wishlist functionality is nice. So yes, you can bring the price down on these builds in several ways, like if you're willing to gamble on warranty-less second-hand gear or eBay stuff, or less well-regarded websites and such, or even component substitutions if you're willing to go with less well-known brands. Like I said, the prices here are just for comparison's sake. 
So those were the two main options I boiled everything down to. Now, I have in fact started taking delivery of components for a build based on one of these lists. It is a thing that is absolutely happening in the real world. And of course, I will be showing it to you right here on the tubes of you. But my actual final component list is a little bit different to either of these wish lists I made. Thanks to a bit of serendipitous timing from a couple of different companies who were asking me about looking at their stuff in a video for reviews and things. I've been able to go ahead and tie some sample and review gear into the build itself. And wonderfully for me, in some cases, it's a significant upgrade in quality or utility. Like I've even got a neat little water cooler going in now for the CPU instead of the stock heatsink and fan I'd planned on starting with. And in the case of the case, well, I'm not going to spoil it for you yet, but oh man, it's way more unique and much more interesting looking than even that cute little DOA PC HD PC cube. Do not miss those videos. The case alone is going to be worth it. This system should look pretty freaking killer, actually, even if it is just an i3 steam machine to start out with. Anyway, I invite you to discuss the choices I've presented here in the comment section. Which build would you make? What changes would you make? Would you spend more or less? What would you sacrifice for the sake of budget? Or what would you upgrade for the sake of power? Or indeed, just for kick our sexy looks. And finally, which of these builds do you think I'm basing the real world machine off? Am I building on top of the bang for buck budget options, cooking along on a Haswell refresh chip, or the pricier but upgrade friendlier Skylake critter? Frankly, if you've been paying attention, that's not a difficult question to answer, but I thought I'd ask it anyway because, haha, <laughs> audience interaction. The actual build videos will start in about a week or so from when this one goes up, if everything goes to plan. I'm still waiting on one more component to be delivered, so I can't quite start the build yet. But I wanted to get this video out of the way as kind of an episode zero, a uh, preparation for the real build. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.